Hi guys. So today I'm going to be talking about something super interesting and kind of creepy, and it's nature versus nurture, what makes somebody a serial killer. So um, if you guys have taken criminal justice before, if there's any juniors and seniors in here, it's pretty similar to what you guys have learned about from what I've been told. So um, to start, we're going to talk about an author named Anne Rule. In the 1970s, she was a crime writer, and she also worked for a suicide hotline in her spare time where she met a man named Ted Bundy, and this is Ted. So they became super close friends, like she considered him his, her absolute best friend. And Ted was really, really, really good at his job. And a lot of people really liked Ted around the suicide hotline because he was really calm, and he was really good at making other people feel calm, and so he was very good at his job. He was especially known for being very good at coaxing women away from suicide. So one day, Anne was driving home from work, and heard on the radio that uh, 36 women had been killed in Washington state. That's a lot of women, and they were suspecting that it had been by the same person. So she's listening and listening, and she decides this sounds a lot like my friend Ted. But it can't be Ted, because she knows Ted, and why would he kill 36 people? He's not even capable of such a thing. So she's debating, do I call this in? Because it really, really sounds like Ted. And she decides, yes, I'm going to call it in, and I'm going to report that it's Ted. And it ended up being Ted Bundy. So her best friend for like four or five years was convicted of killing 36 women. So I actually read this book that she wrote called The Stranger Beside Me. And what it's about is Ted and her relationship with him and how she had absolutely no idea that he was a serial killer. And I read that and I thought, how do you not know that somebody's a serial killer? How do you not know at all, even if they're your best friend? And I thought, I want to know why somebody's a serial killer. So the argument in science has long been between nature versus nurture, nature being your psychology and your brain makeup, and then nurture being the way that you grew up and what life experiences affected your uh, later on in life, you later on in life. So the three things that I found that were most important when talking about a serial killer and what makes a serial killer are genetics, family, and psychology, and we're going to talk about all three of them a little more in depth. So the first one that we're going to talk about is genetics. And we're going to talk about Jim Fallon and the MAOA gene. So on the screen right here is a PET scan, or the many PET scans that Jim Fallon did in his research with serial killers. Um, but before we talk about him, I just want to ask you guys a question. How many serial killers do you think there are that are women? Just like shout at a number. So there are three really famous ones and nine reported women serial killers. So like none compared to how many men commit crime and how many men have been serial killers. So why could this be? Well, a big reason is because of Jim Fallon and what he explains. So this is Jim Fallon and he's actually giving his TED talk on his experiments. So what he did was he took a random sample of not only his family, but also serial killers. And they weren't labeled, so he didn't know who was who. And what he was looking for was a chemical brain change in a PET scan. So um, going back, these are his PET scans that he did. So you can see like genetic makeup and some genetic things when you look at a brain scan like that. I can't because I'm not a neurologist, but he can. So he's a neuroscience professor at UC Berkeley. And what he's found was that Serial killers have this MAOA gene defect. So what is that? The MAOA gene is the gene in anyone that causes violence and aggression. And it's stronger in men, which is why men are inherently more violent just as a people. Um, and what happens when there's a defect is that that's when you get people that are overly abusive, that have anger management problems. They're super aggressive. So it's found on the X chromosome. And I don't know how many of you guys remember what you learned about in biology, but women have two X chromosomes and men only have one. So when a woman has this defect, it's going to almost always be canceled out by her other normal X chromosome. And if a man, ha if a man has it, it's not going to get canceled out. So he's going to be way more aggressive than the average man. And that's a big part of why women aren't serial killers, is because what Jim Fallon found in his PET scans was that every single serial killer that he had had this gene defects. So they're inherently more violent, they're inherently more aggressive. But he also found something kind of interesting. He found that some of his family members had this defect. And he was like, oh, that's concerning because I don't want my family to be serial killers. Um, he found that his great, 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 great way back aunt was Lizzie Borden, who was one of the three really famous women serial killers. She was actually one of the first serial killers in general. And he had absolutely no idea when he started this experiment that that was the case. So kind of 
fluke for him. But none of his other relatives since that woman had been serial killers. So he said, okay, they, all the serial killers that I researched had this defect, but so did my family, and none of them are serial killers. So, like, what's going on? So that brings us to the second thing, which is family. And here, this is Jeffrey Dahmer when he's like 12, which is kind of creepy. Um, but upbringing and its impact. So the thing that I like to focus on with family is this traumatic event that happens with most serial killers. So we have Ted Bundy, Jeffrey Dahmer, and John Wayne Gacy. With uh, Ted Bundy, his really traumatic event was that when he was younger, he found out by his mom that the man that she said was his father wasn't his father. So she lied to him, basically, when he was a kid. And most people would be hurt, I guess, but not nearly as upset as he would be because what he decided to do was make it his life's mission to uh, embarrass women, degrade women, which is why he became a serial killer. Big thing for So it was his really, really big traumatic event. Uh, Jeffrey Dahmer over here, he is um, really well known for being a serial killer of only boys. And what happened for him was from the age of eight on, he was sexually abused by his father. So that ended up having a huge impact on his life, especially when he became a serial killer because that's exactly what he did to the boys that he kidnapped and killed. So lastly, we have John Wayne Gacy, and he's known as the clown killer. Um, so he used to dress up as a clown and lure kids into his house and then kill them. And basically for John Wayne Gacy, it was really similar to Jeffrey Dahmer. He was uh, verbally, physically, sexually abused by his father. Uh, when he was younger and his the rest of his family was also abused so it was like a really really sad life so obviously any kid with these kinds of circumstances aren't going to have a great life they're obviously going to be troubled but what this ends up doing is either causing or resurfacing mental illness that uh, all three of these men had so obviously you can have a really traumatic event in your life that doesn't cause you to become a serial killer but uh, the last thing uh, that we're going to talk about is psychology, but before we get to that, we're going to talk about some warning signs for serial killers. So, kind of like how to spot one if you're ever curious. Um, and we talk about three things, animal abuse, arson, and bedwetting. So the first one that we're going to talk about is animal abuse, and that is uh, a really, really big one. Almost all serial killers are found to abuse animals when they're younger. So Jeffrey Dahmer is the main example that I'm going to use for this one because he did all three. So Jeffrey Dahmer used to abuse cats when he was younger. Um, the way that or the reason that serial killers will do this is because it's a power thing. They feel powerful over another being, and that's why that they kill them or abuse them or mutilate them, whatever they're going to do. So that was a big one for him. The next one is arson, which is intentionally setting things on fire, and Jeffrey Dahmer did that as well. And that's, a basic, uh, that's for destroying things. So they, again, it's a power struggle. They want to feel powerful over other things, so they set things on fire. Um, the last one is bedwetting, and before everyone gets upset, no, that doesn't mean that if you wet your bed when you were three that you're going to be a serial killer. Um, what it means is that a lot of serial killers are found to have wet their bed until an unusually old age. I'm talking like between the ages of like 12 and 15. So if you did that, no, you're not a serial killer. What it means is they have these underlying mental health issues, like I stated before with the traumatic effects, or the traumatic event, excuse me. So when you have this issue of bedwetting until an unusually old age, that's embarrassing for anyone. And what it causes uh, them to do is feel further isolated and alienated from normal society and normal people around them. Um, so it actually furthers their mental, il mental illness a lot of the time. So the last thing that we're going to talk about is psychology, psychopaths versus psychotics. What's the difference? Because a lot of people don't know the difference. Um, we're going to talk about psychopathy. So it's a personality disorder, like narcissistic personality disorder, schizophrenia, multiple personality disorder. It's almost 100% of the time more permanent because it's actually a chemical and genetic defect in your brain versus psychosis, which is a complete loss of one's sense of reality. And it's not as permanent because it's not affecting the same parts of your brain. And a huge part of psychopathy versus psychosis is that with psychopathy comes this complete lack of empathy which is really, really big in serial killers and is pretty much the entire reason why they can kill 30, 40 people and just not even care about it. So this is Ted Bundy here again, and this is the house that he grew up in, but um, he was a known psychopath, so it's more permanent and it's more likely he, you as a psychopath are then statistically more likely to commit crime and it contributes to the lack of empathy. So if you look right here, you can see that this is Ted in his trial for killing 36 women and he's stone-faced up here and then he's laughing about it, and it's so funny. So he has a big like, lack of empathy because of that, and you can see that in those pictures. So 
Nature versus nurture, which one is it? Um, scientists have been studying this for a long, long time. And Jim Fallon's discovery with the MAOA gene was probably two or three years ago, and that was like breakthrough um, to find that genetic defect. Um, they're working to find more things, and I know that like, I'm pretty excited to learn uh, what uh, forensic psychologists and forensic people are gonna uh, find. But we really know right now is that it's a mixture of the two of them. And yeah, that's my TED Talk. Does anybody have any questions? Cool. Thanks, guys.